I fell into this sanctuary just by accident. We bought this property, these two goats showed up. Somebody asked me if I had room for goats and they showed up and the next thing you knew, a few pigs showed up and the next thing you knew, all these other animals showed up and we finally decided, you know what, we're gonna do just a bon, we're gonna have a bona fide sanctuary. And that was sort of the beginning of Rancho Compassion. I went on a camping trip when I was 12 years old and had to eat a, ve a vegetarian diet for a few days. Um, I was appalled. I thought it was the worst food in the world. I couldn't wait to get back home. When I got back home, my mother put pork chops in front of me. For some reason, in my little 12-year-old brain, I made a connection between that and a pig. And all of a sudden, it was such a weird moment because I still remember looking at that pork chop and thinking, that's not food. That was an animal. And I pushed the pork chop away and I literally never ate meat again. It was like this instantaneous connection. I had to do something that created value. I had to do something that was aligned with what I had always thought was my life's purpose, but had never had the opportunity to really fully blossom. I always found food as an effective way of activism because through delicious food, you can win people over. To, you know, people say, wow, if I could eat like this, I'd go vegan. Miyoko's Creamery, I mean, why am I making cheese out of cashews and legumes? Because it's all about the animals. They're entitled to a life of their own, to live life according to their wishes, and that's a story we want to tell. We want to show people that it, you can have foods that are every bit as good as their animal dairy counterparts. We don't have a lot of time left on this planet. There are animals that are dying all around us, and we have to become a stronger voice for them. We can start, I don't know, we have a cow in the front. Did you see the cow in the front? Uh, so we're gonna go into the primary production and you're gonna see uh, you know, how and where we make our products. You know, the dairy industry is a very, very complicated thing. It's an industry that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, and most of the dairy farmers that are, let's say, out in, you know, where I live, uh, all over the country, in fact, are third, fourth, fifth generation farmers. This is all they know, this is all they have been doing. And maybe their grandparents, their great-grandparents, had a really small farm with maybe 15 cows. The same farmers today, they're a part of a co-op usually, and they're selling their milk to these large corporations. You know, all this consolidation has occurred, and the farmers themselves are now exploited. And dairy farmers are struggling. The whole industry is collapsing. As vegans, we often only think about the animals and trying to save them from an unsavory fate. But we also have to realize that there are people that are caught up in the system that are also victims. And that's why we have this Dairy Farm Transition Program, because we want to help those farmers that, you know, they're not evil people. They're just trying to do their, they're just trying to make a living. They're just trying to, oftentimes they'll say, we're just trying to feed America. They think they're doing the good work. So let's help them do that. In 2019, we got a letter from the Department of Food and Agriculture in California that we could not use the term butter, that it belonged to the dairy industry, along with images of cows. Uh, we were also told we couldn't use lactose-free, hormone-free, revolutionizing dairy with plants. And it was such an absurd letter, I had a great laugh, and then I contacted Animal Legal Defense Fund, and they represented us in suing the CDFA for violating our First Amendment rights to free speech. And we are so happy to say that uh, just recently we won that lawsuit. Uh, a U.S. District Court ruled that, uh, that consumers were not confused by the terminology butter as long as it was modified by something like vegan and that we have every right to use that term. Right now I'm standing in the aging room with all of our artisanal cheeses. These are the cheeses that I first started the company with seven years ago. And I remember when I first started, we had an aging room that was about one-tenth this size. And I thought, oh my God, we'll never ever fill it up. And of course, very, very quickly, it got filled up. 
This room is filled up. We have another one next door that's a little bigger. And the, the business just keeps growing. The demand for vegan cheese just keeps climbing. And it's super, super exciting. I mean, veganism is the way to change the world. It, it really, really is. So whether you're a vegan, full-time vegan, or a part-time vegan, or a pre-vegan, as far as I'm concerned, everyone is a pre-vegan. And, and that's how we're gonna change the world. Yeah, we've come a long ways, but there's just so much more to do. The thing that I'm most grateful for is that I have this opportunity. I have an opportunity to make a difference and I feel it is my responsibility to work as hard as I can for as long as I can to have as much impact as I can.